I happen to be talking to a partner at my law firm that I've written this book and I just can't get anybody to give me feedback and I don't understand what's wrong with them. So, you know, um, she said, well, I'll read it, but don't, don't give it to me unless you want me to be honest with you. And I'm like, oh, cool. So I'm like, I went home, copied the manuscript, got, got the manuscript copied for her. And by that time, I had started working on another book. And I had like 50 pages of my second book, because I had read that John Grisham got 45 rejection letters, and people told him nobody wanted to read about lawyers. So I'm like, if John Grisham can handle 45 rejection letters, 25 of my friends can reject my book, and I can still keep going. So I gave her the book, the manu that manuscript, but I also tacked on the 50 pages of my second novel, because I figured, she's going to love this one, I'm going to give her this one. <laughs> and she promised to read it. So a couple of weeks later, she got back to me, and she said very nicely, um, I, I, I read your book, your first book, and it, it's, it's fine. Um, but your second book, your second book, that's the one I want to read. It reads like butter, it's smooth, and blah, 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 and the story. And she was just, she was just going on and on about these 50 pages. Now, I spent three years on that first book. <laughs> and she was politely telling me to put the book on the shelf. And I was like, it's like, you know, you have two children and somebody says, well, this child is cute, but this one isn't. Because <laughs> they are like my children. And I walked away because I, I went to her house and we, you know, ate and we talked about the book. And, the, and she was just, all she wanted to focus on was the second novel. And I walked there away very, very kind of frustrated and hurt. But as I thought about it, this was the first encouragement that I'd received about my writing. And it wasn't just encouragement, she was, she was going on and on about it. She was very excited about it. So I decided to put the first book on the shelf and finish the second book. And everything happened with that book. It won, um, now in the meantime, I decided to go ahead and send query letters out on the first book. And I'd received a, a bunch of rejection letters. Um, and um, a couple things happened in between that first and second book that helped me find my voice and helped me, uh, were, were keys to my success. Um, uh, one thing, I took a one day writer's course at UCLA where the guy said something that had never crossed my mind. He said, take a book that's like yours and outline it. I had never crossed my mind to outline a novel. Well, I'm a lawyer and I write legal thrillers. I took John Grisham's The Firm and I outlined it. I had already read it years earlier, so I took it and I just went uh, uh, chapter one, Mitch meets with the partners. The partners want Mitch to come to Memphis, but he doesn't want to go. Chapter two, uh, his wife, blah, 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 blah. I mean, very short, couple of sentence outlines of the book. And it was a, a tremendous light bulb moment for me. I saw the structure. I saw the, 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 the plot points dropped in. I, it, it just sort of came together for me at that point. The second thing that happened to me uh, was that a coworker at work um, was telling me, we were just talking about writing. She was talking about one of her, her, um, her um, uh, writers that she really liked, and one of them was James Patterson. I had never heard of James Patterson. This was 2003, four, three, And so she brought me Roses Are Red by James Patterson. You know, I, I like mystery, so I read it. I read the book in one day. I've never read a book in one day. I'm not a particularly fast reader. And because I read it in one day, I wanted to understand why I read this book in one day and I'd never read another book in one day. So I went through it structurally. One, the chapters were short which gives you the illusion that you're going through it faster than you are. There was a hook at the beginning of every cha uh, chapter and at the end of every chapter. You know, there's, at the end of every chapter, he says something or describes something that makes you think what's going to happen next. The second thing that it was, there was a lot of action. Whether, whether it was just two people in a room talking or whatever, there was action. And he wasn't describing how the shadow hit the wall, like I had been trying to do in my first book. I took those concepts and finished writing my second, that second book, which was Every Reasonable Doubt. And this time, um, after I finished it, I felt it was a much better, tighter book. And I gave it to just a couple of friends this time um, who promised me that no matter what, they would get back to me and pro or con that they would, um, they would give me their honest feedback. And the reaction was night and day. They got back to me without me having to bug them. They told me how much they liked it. They, somebody asked me if they could have a sister read it or their mother read it. And that was the most important lesson that I learned. If I, it's a good book, people are gonna tell you it's a good book. You don't have to chase them down for six months.